Math 31, welcome to example 10. Now example 10 looks more intimidating than it actually is. Both of these look more intimidating than they actually are. So let's read the directions and then stare these problems down. So it says the equation t, which is equal to t sub zero, plus c e to the negative kt can be used to describe Newton's law of cooling. Solve this equation for k. All right. Newton's Law of Cooling, we are going to talk about that in a later section. It's coming. But for right now, I just want to introduce you to this equation. And I'm not even going to tell you what capital T, T sub zero, K, C, all of that stand for. All I want us to do is solve for this K. And keep in mind that K is up in the exponent. All right, so I need to get this all by itself. So imagine, right, we need to get this all by itself. What algebra do we want to do? Well, if I gotta get the k all by itself, I need to isolate this exponential term, all right? And it's not isolated right now. I've got a t sub zero here, I've got a c here. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract the t sub zero to the other side of the equation. Now, when I do that, I'm gonna have t minus t sub zero is equal to c e to the negative kt, all right? Because I'm gonna move this over. And for me, I like to have the variable that I'm solving for on the left side of the equation. So I'm actually going to write this this way, okay? I just like having that variable on the left side of the equation. All right, again, I want to isolate this exponential term. So what I want to do to both sides is I want to divide by c. So if I divide by c here, I'm now looking at e to the negative kt is equal to this ratio of t minus t sub zero over c. Okay, great, I'm just gonna keep on going. All right, now, I have an exponential equation, right? I've got e to the negative kt and I have t minus t sub zero over here. So when you have an exponential equation and you have a base e over here and a base on this side that is not e, what were our mechanics for this section? So I'll say it again, you have an exponential equation, the base on the left side, is not equal to the base on the right side. So what do I need to do to both sides of that equation? I need to take the logarithm. And you can use LOG or LN. I'm gonna to opt to use LN because I've got an E here. All right, so I'm gonna take the natural log of both sides. Okay, I have no idea what this is and I don't need to. I can just leave it like that. But anytime I see an LN and an E, I know that the base of my logarithm and the base of my power are the same, so these are gonna cancel out, and I'll just make sure we write that so I'm not skipping any steps. These will cancel out, and I'm left with negative kt is equal to ln of t minus t sub zero over c. And I'm getting so close to the answer. Again, my, my directions were to solve for k. So if I want to isolate this guy, right? I have negative one times k times t. How do I undo a multiplication by negative one and a multiplication by t? Well, I'm going to divide both sides by negative t. And I know that's a lot to write, but that's okay. When I divide by negative t, the only thing that survives on the left side of the equation is k, which is what I wanted to. And then this giant beast of an expression is my answer. Oops. Sorry, I just realized. Let me back this up. I did not put proper parentheses around this term. All right. I have to remember that the c is in my argument. So this was ln of t minus t sub zero over c. Excuse me for that. And I want to stay consistent with that here. So then I have negative, and we'll go ln of t minus t sub zero over c, and then in the denominator, t. All right. So yes, this equation looks ugly, but ultimately I'm asking you to solve for that exponent. And anytime you want to solve for an exponent, we're going to need a logarithm, because that's what logarithms are. They're exponents. So I needed to subtract the t sub zero. I needed to divide by c. I needed to log both sides. I opted to do ln because ln's and e's cancel. And then I need to divide both sides of this equation by negative t, and voila, there is my, my k variable solved for. 
All right, so we got one more applied problem and we'll be done with this section. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Bye.